the genuine article. Discussion and commentary based on articles from Jack. Hello, I'm Tony DeMario, the editor of Jack, here with another edition of Inside Jack. And today I'm talking to Dr. Paul Ritker, who's known very well, I'm sure, to everybody. He's the Brownwall Professor of Medicine at Harvard Medical School, and most recently uh, renowned for being the pr uh, pr principal investigator of the Jupiter trial, which tested the concept of giving a statin to patients who had relatively acceptable uh, LDL levels but elevated CRP. In this particular paper, we address what happened to those patients in whom the LDL was lowered to 50 or less uh, on therapy. So Paul, give us the answer. What does happen? Well, Tony, first, it's always a pleasure to join you on these interviews for Jack, and we're very pleased the paper's coming out. The bottom line is that when we lowered the LDL cholesterol in Jupiter from its baseline of about 100 down to below 50, the patients just had better clinical outcomes, fewer vascular events, and most interestingly, we saw no safety signal. So the people whose LDL was below 50 as compared to those whose on-treatment LDL was above 50, same rates of side effects, all very low. So some of the implications here are why aren't we giving more potent statins to most of our patients? Why are we titrating at all might be one implication of this. Sure. Now, my recollection <laughs> is that the benefit was uh, about a 50% benefit relative. Well, that's right. The overall benefit in Jupiter by targeting statins to those at a high HSCRP, we got a 44% reduction in our primary endpoint. It's about a 25% reduction among those who never got their LDL below 50 but a 65% reduction in those who did get their LDL below 50. And again, the question becomes, in now that we have more and more powerful drugs, should we be thinking about lower and lower targets? Yes, how low <coughs> should we go? Well, we have 25% of patients in Jupiter whose on-treatment LDL was actually in the 30s. And even that group, we see no evidence of differential toxicity. Now, that's hard to achieve. I would argue that what we really want is a percent reduction, and a percent reduction of about 50% works very well for all of our patients. The key message here, though, is we don't really see a floor. And remember that physiologic levels of LDL cholesterol in a non-Western society often run 30, 40, or 50. In fact, one of the interesting things in this new analysis is the baseline LDL did not predict the benefit of resuvastatin. Remember, Tony, that Jupiter only enrolled a patient if their native LDL was below 130. The average was about 100. But in this paper we show when the baseline untreated LDL was below 90, below 80, below 70, even below 60, the exact same relative risk reduction on events. Suggesting again that while the inflammation did predict risk, the LDL really didn't. But the on-treatment LDL, we can go much lower. Why measure <laughs> LDL at all? <laughs> Look, LDL remains the major risk factor for heart disease, and while my own personal interests are in how these drugs lower inflammation as well as LDL, they're LDL-lowering drugs, and they're very, very effective. But one could imagine a future where you said, look, uh, perhaps above some absolute risk or maybe just above an age criterion, particularly as these drugs become less and less expensive and therefore more and more cost-effective, it is an argument that you'll be hearing down the road. Your journal was very kind to us and recently published a paper about the cost efficacy of the Jupiter trial. And while I was not involved in that paper, the punchline was that it's not just cost effective, it was cost saving for most of the participants in the trial. In other words, screening and treating would save society money if we could get ourselves to sort of recognize the benefit of these drugs. Yeah, and, and perhaps screening, as you say, isn't necessary. Perhaps uh, uh, not in the water supply, but over a certain age group, that would be the thing to do. It's a very interesting hypothesis. Our guidelines, which will come out later this year, have to be evidence-based. And the evidence now says if LDL is high, we know statins are effective in primary prevention. If the CRP is high, we know they're effective. That's probably what the guidelines will say. But five or ten years from now, if we have more and more evidence that the drugs are just effective, it is not impossible to imagine a scenario where you might say, maybe some simple clinical things will just tell us we should treat. But that's the future. That's the future. Very exciting and very reassuring that even at very low LDL levels, uh, we're not seeing much in the way of side effects. Uh, we'll wait for you to bring back the future for us. For Inside Jack, I'm Tony DeMaria.